Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Got a rainy day here today, hunkering down. So a long, long time ago, but I can still remember the way things used to be. I was up in those Colorado Rockies doing a little nursing for the local clinic there. And sometimes I would be called upon to head way into the boondocks to check on some some ornery old coots. That's right. So after one big snowstorm, uh, I had trudged my way out of my little mountain getaway into the little mountain town, and I made a few home visits on some of the uh, little old people that I would go in there and check in on that were homebound. And I would sometimes go in and make them a meal, make sure that they were uh, getting what they needed for the day. And my nursing supervisor contacted me while I was in town and said that there was one woman way out in the rural area that the primary care nurse for that person could not reach because the snow was too deep to get back into where she was living. And I had a pretty mean four-wheel drive at the time, an old Scout that could go just about anywhere. <clears throat> so they gave me some uh, semi-vague instructions how to find this person. And it was a little old lady, about 90 years old. I had never met her before, hadn't even heard of her. But I kind of knew the area where she was living. And when they gave me the directions, I headed out. And they said they hadn't been able to get out there in days and check on this person. So I headed out and went to try to find her. And the snow was so deep, it was probably over two feet deep everywhere. And off the maintained county road, which was gravel, but maintained, you know, the plow had been through there. Uh, this woman lived two miles probably off that maintained road. And since it, the snow was so deep, I couldn't see exactly the road or the path into this uh, woman's cabin, or I had no idea how she was living or anything, but they just said, my gosh, she might not have eaten for days. And they were just worried sick, and no one else had, was willing to even try to go back there because it was, you know, so, so rough to get back in there. So yeah, I took my my scout, and I finally figured out kind of where it looked like the road might be, but the, like I said, the snow was so deep, couldn't really tell. So I started trudging down what I assumed was the path in, and it wasn't too deep in, and I was having trouble getting in there in four-wheel low. I chained up all four tires and started inching my way in there, hoping I was on the right path. And of course there was no like cell phone coverage or anything like that where I was heading, uh, no communication whatsoever. Uh, the woman that lived back there did not even have a phone, uh, no power whatsoever, living extremely off the grid. And I got to be within a, maybe a quarter mile of where I assumed she was living and I finally saw some smoke rising on the horizon, you know, out in front of me. And I was like, okay, someone's got a fire going out there. So I thought I must be on the right path. And then I got a little bit closer in and I could see this old, old mobile home out there, just, just about buried in snow. Uh, no tracks around it whatsoever, of course, because the snow was so deep. I had no idea what I was going to be walking into. Didn't even know if you know, what the situation was. But I was built up with a lot of like, oh my gosh, this woman probably hasn't eaten for days and uh, it's desperate. So, but I could see smoke coming out of, you know, an obvious wood stove uh, chimney out of that mobile home. So I thought, well, whoever place that this is, is alive, right? but I didn't even know if I had the right place at all. And it probably took me, you know, well over an hour of breaking trail. You know, I sometimes would, the snow would get so deep in front of my scout that I would have to back up and then 
trudge through with some speed and keep breaking that uh, wall of snow in front of my vehicle down a little bit. But I finally made it up to where I could see there was a mobile home there with a lot of snow on the roof and a lot of snow everywhere else. And when I pulled up, you know, pretty close to the mobile home, there was no tracks whatsoever around that at all. So no one had been outside that I could tell anywhere. So then I walked around to the front after I stopped. And on the other side of the mobile home, which I couldn't see when I first pulled in, was a deck. And on that deck, I kid you not, there was probably on the railing, 50, 60 birds sitting up there, all having a good time, all indigenous birds, all different kinds. They looked very happy. As I got closer, the deck I could tell had been shoveled off. And I trudged up there, knocked on the door. And uh, this little old lady, frail looking, blind, mind you, could not see whatsoever, opened the door and I said, hey, I'm Bob, I'm from the clinic. They asked me to come out and make sure you were okay. Um, and, you know, maybe make you some breakfast. And she said, oh, honey, I ate a long time ago. But she offered me to come in the, into her home and offered me a cup of tea and I just sat there and observed how she was doing, and she was absolutely fine. She didn't need a thing. She just kept saying, I told those nurses I don't need any help. I tell them that all the time. I don't need any help. And she could not see, but she knew where everything was. She had been going out and feeding those birds that were gathered on her porch. It was a most beautiful, serene setting of many of that I knew of out there, but this was really a little sanctuary going on out there. And the vibe coming off of her and the surroundings in a very sim simple, simple way of living really impressed me. And as, as she was making me a cup of tea, you know, I was looking around what she had going on inside of her mobile home. And there were shelves and shelves and shelves along one wall with mason jars uh, stacked up all the way across every single shelf. And it was full of like a lot of indigenous herbs that were growing out there and then other herbs from wherever, um, but nothing but herbs, nothing but herbs, dried herbs. And I started talking to her about that and she said, that's really all I need to take care of myself and stay healthy. And I did not know about any of that, like using herbs for health and whatnot, but uh, she was 90 years old, blind, out there, no communication, no nothing whatsoever, and she was fine. And she had, there's a nice little fire going in her wood stove. It was a very comfortable home. She, she you know, it was well kept, well organized really made a, an impression on me. It really did. And she just kind of scolded me a little bit, like, you shouldn't have risked even coming out here, you know? You could have got really stuck out here, and you don't know where you're at and everything. And I just got tickled to death on how strong and resilient this person was. I mean, she didn't weigh 90 pounds wet, and she was fine. She was absolutely fine. <laughs> now, of course, this woman in just normal conditions couldn't get out and do things like uh, supply runs, like a lot of the people in the real rural conditions or real rural areas did have to do. She obviously had some help that was keeping her stocked up, but she knew what she needed. And under good normal weather conditions, you know, people could haul supplies back in there for her, and then she always knew where they were, and she always had months and months worth of stuff to get by on. And as far as her uh, medical, uh, she wanted that left up to her, her and her herbs. Uh, that made such a huge impression on me. I wished I could have spent much, much more time with her. Uh, I never did. 
ever see her again. I never was called on to go back in there. But when I was driving away after sitting around visiting with her for a couple of hours, I just thought, wow, I hope I can live to that ripe old age and not need anything either. And she had it down. Whatever she needed, she had it down. Yeah, I wish I would have figured out what all those herbs she was relying upon did because for 90 years old and living that far remote, and it was one of the most remote places I've ever visited, ever. And I lived extremely remote, but this, this little old lady had me beat all the way around. She had it, she had it going on. And the birds that were on her little front porch, her deck, and, and of course the views of the mountains and everything, and I just thought, this is really what it's all about. And she went on and on about how long she had lived there and that she, you know, that's where she was going to fall down one day and not get up. And that's exactly the way she wanted it. She never wanted to see the inside of a hospital. And, uh, and that's where they found her one day was out there in her little sanctuary. Yeah. Anyway, just reminiscing on a day where I'm hunkered down with some rain, everything's good out here, and that story came to me, and I thought, yeah, I'm just going to share it with you guys, yeah, she was an amazing woman, wished I would have known her better, but on one encounter, I will never forget her, so have a great weekend, everybody, aloha, catch you on the next one, a lot of stories I got, and that one was worth sharing. Right, P? P? What do you think? You're kind of a little old lady now, too. <laughs>